Hi guys and welcome back. Today we have a Samsung laptop. It's an RV510. We're going to do a full service on it. I'm going to cover most of the hardware stuff today. Just because the video is way too long. We kind of go into depth with the servicing so you'll see from the video yourself. So basically with this model laptop you're going to unscrew every screw you see there on the back. And just remove the hard drive. The laptop came into us because it's uh, actually overheating and uh, it's running very slow. Uh, I do a time comparison here at the very end of the video as well. So once all the screws are released, we'll release the clips for the keyboard. Funnily enough, this keyboard actually had adhesive on the back of it, which is not stock. It shouldn't. Um, it shouldn't be in there. It took a little more effort than usual, but we got there. Now we can release some of the ribbon cables and start to unclip the body. Really, if it doesn't come away freely at this at this stage, you've you've missed a screw. So I'll just go back and and check again. So you can see here the actual the level of dust that's on the board. This is nothing unusual. This is most laptops will have this amount of dust on them. Um, this is actually it's insulating the laptop and it's holding a lot of heat in there as well. Not so much on the board, but you'll see here when we disassemble the fan. So again, we're just going to remove the cables. And just a little pen you see me working with there. If I see a screw inside that I might forget the location, I'll just put a little bit of the gold paint and that'll highlight the area for me that needs the screw. So that's the motherboard taken out. So first things first, we'll do a little cleaning. So we're just going to unplug the fan and we're going to remove the heatsink. There's a good amount of thermal paste on here. It's still, it's not completely dry. It's, um, it's just while you're in this fire, there's absolutely, there's no excuse not to change it. And um, plus it's an awful lot easier to work with this fan if we take it off the board. So I'm just removing the tape that's sealing the heatsink onto the fan itself. And this will give you a kind of just an idea of the restriction that can be caused just by dust alone. You can see I. I'm going to say 60-65% of that is completely covered, blocked with dust. Again, this is nothing unusual. This is, uh, this is normal. The problem is that a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll blow from the inside or blow from the outside of the laptop in to, um, to free up the dust. But realistically, all you're doing is pushing it back into the board. At some stage, it'll find its way back out again. So we're just going to get the fan, the blades themselves are cleaning. They're really fragile blades, blades as well. If you break one of the blades, it has to be replaced because it'll throw the balance off on the fan. I 
again we're just trying to remove as much of that as much as, as, much as that uh, dust as we can You just kind of screw everything back on together now. And the remains of the old thermal paste, we need to get that all off. So you can see here I'm using 99.9% .9 isopropanol. Um, it's uh, it's an extremely fast thinners. It's It evaporates nearly as soon as you put it down. Usually the higher concentrations are the best. You'll see everything from 70% up. Um, used on electronics for cleaning boards and stuff um, I recommend just go for as, as uh, high up the percentage as you can get your hands on and I'm using captain tape the captain tape is a uh, heat resistant tape just to seal that joint again and uh, to make sure the airflow doesn't escape so I'll just remove the sticker ram just so we can get a good good visible view of the board and yeah we'll just start dusting again you could do this uh, by leaving the motherboard inside but you you really you wouldn't be doing a good job because you all this will be left behind you wouldn't be able to view this part of it when it comes to a complete service like this we'd always take out the motherboard itself just to inspect it anyway top to toe and clean everything so we've got isopropanol again just to, uh, to clean the top of the CPU and the GPU so this is the thermal paste uh, it just happens to be Cooler Masters a little goes a long way some of the cheaper brands of this stuff is uh, it's conductive so this stuff is fine it's not but like there is no point in using any more than what I'm using there um, depending on the size of your the die on your CPU really it's all there it's just there to fill in the gaps between the heatsink and the top of the CPU to make sure that the as much heat can transfer between the two surfaces as possible so realistically, if any's going over the edge of your antenna, it's actually it'll be conducting heat in the wrong direction. It, you need to get that heat away from the CPU as fast as possible. So less is sometimes better. You can actually see the sandwich if we just see the sandwich we we got in there, and that was a, a tiny amount of um, thermal paste. We just plug back in the fan. The customer asked me to have a look at the um, the housing of the laptop. It's pretty rough and tatty. You can see the grills are gone for the fan, and it's it's got broken hinges and not really not really in good shape. So I opted to use one of our donors, and we we'll just put that one to one side. And this is the donor. The donor happens to be in excellent condition. You know, the, there's a few scratches here and there, but it's a lot better than the one that was on it. Just making sure everything is clear and we're going to fit that motherboard back in again just make sure we're not snagging any of the cable and everything is sitting in as it should be this is where i can look back to the um the other one that i marked with the gold pin and i know that i've that screw removed from the top right hand corner and just replaced you can see here we're just going to put in a new battery I'll just I'll always test the battery before we put it in that's 3.2 volts that's perfect um, the other one was reading 3.2 as well but you just you always change them once you're in here just change it
So this is the old cover. You can see a lot of scratches, especially on this side here, a lot of marks and scratches and dings and just doesn't look good. So again, we're going to use the one from the donor. Uh, the one from the donor has a little mark on the power button though. So we are going to swap out that power button just to finish it off. So it's just two tabs and they're actually um, plastic welded in. So the soldering iron, uh, just to melt the top of them and it'll pop off for you. It doesn't crack or damage anything. Now we're gonna go after the one that we're gonna use. So again, just touch the two connections. I find using the, the the soldering iron is excellent for this. It leaves enough plastic on there as well that it, when you're rejoining it, you just have to mix the two bits of plastic together and it more or less welds itself again. Uh, just another little bit of isopropanol just to clean that button before we put it in. And once it's in place, I'm going to weld that plastic back together again. Realistically, all I'm doing here is I'm just I'm folding the plastic over and over and over on itself, and I just um, the button really isn't doing anything anyway. It's against um, it's against a, um, a switch anyway, so it's just hold it in place. But it's pretty strong once it's done, and that's just a black pen just to cover the the white marks. So as you can see, a lot better. That would bug me. I would have to change that. If I didn't, it would bug me. And it's just, it only took a few minutes to do, so it did make a big difference. So as you can see, the laptop is nice and shiny inside. I'm going to fit back on the top bezel. And push everything in until we can hear them clicks. I'm going to feed the ribbon cables back into position. Ensuring everything is lined up. Just going all the way around, checking all the surfaces, make sure they're meeting. And at this stage, we don't want to scratch the new top cover. Well, not the new, the reused top cover. So we're going to put down a little cloth there as well. So we're just plugging in the Wi-Fi card and installing the RAM. So here you can see me replacing the screws that are underneath the um, CD once it uh, slides in. And there we go. Just really case of just working back from where we were before and just replacing all the screws that we removed. And yeah, I even I put these two screws in and then I realized I have to take them back out again, so So I'm just gonna slide in the hair drive. And the two screws that go through the is it one screw, it's one screw, two screws. That'll actually uh, the cover holds the hair drive in place as well. So as I said, this, this laptop came in, uh, numerous viruses and um, Windows was just, it was very slow. So we updated the system. Um, so we did a backup. We put the backup back on after reinstalling Windows. Uh, so it's got a fresh um, fresh install of Windows 7. Um, it's got antivirus and everything on it again and the backup of all the client's information. So just last thing, we're gonna install the battery. And the battery is actually dead, so we're gonna plug in the charger. And yeah, perfect. So just a quick uh, Windows, I'm just gonna run through this install. 
as I said, this video turned out to be two and a half, three hours long, so um, I had to cut it down somewhere reasonably uploadable in around 20 minutes. If there's anything in particular any of you would like me to do a video on, don't be afraid to give me a shout. Um, just leave a comment down below or send me um, send me an email. Um, you can contact me at smartrepair247 at gmail.com. Or again, leave a comment. Uh, if it was helpful, you know, leave a thumbs up. So here you can see I have the isopropanol all again. This time I'm using the wipes. Uh, they're at 70%. It's just there's no point in using the expensive ISO on the outside. The 70% is completely, it's fine. This will remove all the grease and dirt marks or anything like that. And it's safe to use on all surfaces. I just, I always remove the battery first anyway, but just to be sure. The nice thing about ISO as well, you can use it for the screen. Just be careful. And not to put too much pressure on the screen. So there we go. This time I'm gonna go around with a little bit of, um, I actually have a plastic polish that I use for these laptops. Uh, it's not it's not slippy, it's a, it's a nice polish and it just gives a bit of depth to all the plastics again, it, you know, it turns them black. Okay, so it's time to do a boot test. Uh, originally, when I got the laptop first, I timed the um, the time it takes to boot up and just to get to the, the Windows login sound, the wave file that plays. So we can compare the two times. So the yellow will be after the service and the red in the top right hand corner will be the before service. So once we get the tone, we're at 37 seconds. And that's after the full service. Before the full service, once the laptop came in um, originally, But it's amazing the difference just doing the basics just to maintain the laptop um, you know the customer has complete right to send it in for service and as you can see huge improvement so we're talking about three minutes 40 seconds in around that uh, so it's not a scientific uh, calculation but it's it's fairly obvious Thanks guys for watching, um, stay tuned for more videos like this.